Well, new questions about whether God is about to join the gun control debate after Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein invites a clergyman to speak at the news conference where she rolled out her assault weapons ban proposal. Reverend Gary Hall, the dean of the Washington National Cathedral, urging worshipers yesterday to unite in favor of gun control. Listen. As people of faith, we have the moral obligation to stand with and for the victims of gun violence and to work to end it. I believe that the gun lobby is no match for the cross lobby, especially when we stand together as people of all faiths across the religious landscape of America. I don't want to take away someone's hunting rifle, but I can no longer justify a society that allows people other than military and police to own weapons like these or that permits the sale of high capacity magazines designed with the purpose of simply killing as many people as quickly as possible. Joining me now, Ben Shapiro, a syndicated columnist. He's the editor at large for Breitbart News as well. And he is the author of Bullies, How the Left's Culture of Fear and Intimidation Silences America. Ben, good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Oh, thanks for having me. Uh, this was an eye opener. Um, you know, it's not the first time we've heard clergy get involved in political debates, but wow, I mean, he came flat out and said, this is not a political issue, it's a religious issue. We who follow Jesus have to stand against guns. Your thoughts? You know, he, he can say whatever he wants. The fact is that it's Dianne Feinstein and the Democrats who are trotting him out to make this, this basic argument, which is that if you oppose their gun control agenda, it's not because you really want to find a different way that doesn't you know, wreck the rights of 300 million Americans to prevent things like Sandy Hook. It's because you're a bad person. It's because you don't care about what happened in Sandy Hook. When he opposes the gun lobby to the cross lobby, the implication is that you are a morally deficient human being if you don't support his political agenda. And this thug tactic has been the element that, that, that the left has been pushing for weeks now, months now. Everybody from President Bush to, uh, from President Obama down all the way to, you know, through the left media, they've been pushing the idea that there is something wrong with us, that we don't care if kids get killed if we don't agree with their gun control agenda, as opposed to let's have a reasonable discussion about how to prevent things like this. We saw President Obama say explicitly that the reason we're seeing lines around the block to get into gun stores now is because people who believe in gun rights are ginning up fears, trying to gin up their own <laughs> ratings, trying to gin up their own revenues, and that's the reason. And then we saw him, when he, when he called for gun control, flanked by young children who had written to the White House or whose parents had encouraged them to do so, but there was a question about whether that was appropriate and whether that was a message to people who don't feel as he does that you are somehow against these children or not in favor of their safety. Well, unfortunately, this is what the left has been doing over and over. The gun control debate is just the latest symptom of this. On the debt ceiling stuff, what they say is that if we disagree with them, it's because we only like rich people and hate poor people. On the gun control debate, they keep trotting out children as though we should be taking policy prescriptions from seven-year-olds. You know, it used to be in this country that when a president of the United States said, I'm dealing with this issue because, for example, my 13-year-old daughter cares about nuclear disarmament, we laughed them. We laughed at them. We laughed them out of the public sphere. Jimmy Carter comes to mind. When President Obama walks out, out there with a bunch of seven-year-olds and says, I'm doing it because these seven-year-olds, they care about gun control, give me a break. I mean, if we're taking our policy prescriptions from kids who can't spell either policy or prescription, we have a problem. This particular uh, reverend, Gary Hall, he, I mean, he's at National Cathedral. I mean, a lot of reviewers know this, and this is a national icon. And he comes out and says, look, uh, I was drawn to religion in the 60s by an activist anti-war, anti-segregation chaplains who were raring to make a scene and he believes he can do the same. This is from the Washington Post. He says, that message fueled a generation of progressive religion and activism, progressive religion and activism, and he wants to get that going again today, saying what he wants to do is like guerrilla theater. I mean, is that what the future holds for us when we go to church on Sunday? Uh, you know, I think that it does because the left continues to politicize everything. I mean, if you, if you look at what they say about the religious right, you know, I'm a religious person. I'm an Orthodox Jew. I'm not a Christian. Uh, but the left says that people like me, people who are, you know, observant Christians, those people are the American Taliban. But then they're happy to trot out people like this reverend to push their political position because he happens to be on their side. And not only that, we are against the Gospels or we're against the Bible or we're against common human decency. If we don't sign off on Dianne Feinstein's nonsensical gun ban, that wouldn't have stopped a single death at Sandy Hook. And yet we have seen clergy take positions on what are 
both religious and political issues before. I mean, when Obamacare was passed, we had a lot of priests come on this show, and rabbis for that matter, and, t and talk about how they believed it, and they're still are talking about in court how they believe it infringes on their religious freedoms because it forces them or religious organizations to cover contraception and other items that they object to morally and religiously. Um, and we've obviously seen uh, priests from the pulpit talk about uh, pro-life, and, and they clearly believe that abortion is murder and so on. So there are some issues that have a foot in both camps. They do. This doesn't happen to be one of them. This is a case where we all want to prevent people from getting killed, innocent people from getting killed. But the problem is that it's only the left that says our policy prescriptions are better than yours morally. That your, your end goal is not the same as ours. They say our end goal does not include saving lives. Our end goal only includes preserving gun rights at the expense of human life. And that's, not, that, that's a character assassination argument, not a political one. If they really want to get something done in Washington, if they really want the American people to go along with their agenda, they should stop demagoguing and claiming that we're, there's something wrong with us, that we're evil, if we disagree with them about how to preserve the, the, the lives of people like the kids at Sandy Hook. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think about that one family... Um, What's her little Christina Green, who was killed in the same shooting massacre that took the, that that, that um, led to Gabby Giffords being shot, and her father came on this broadcast shortly thereafter. It was, it was right after, and he is not a big gun control guy, but his wife is. So it's in the same family with suffering the same tragedy, obviously concerned about the lives of children, but they just had legitimate disagreements on the issues and where to go from it. And even this, even this. Um, this gentleman, uh, the Reverend Gary Hall, he also acknowledges that even clergy is divided on this issue, and yet you wouldn't quite have picked that up if you listened to him <laughs> yesterday. Ben, thanks for being here. Thanks so much for having me. I'll right, see you soon.